very interesting about Caleb's list. He's running five main deck discard, which is more than the typical four. He's running four main deck pack rats, which is more than the typical two. And uh, he's also running two Prophetic Prism, which I understand you and Ricky were talking about earlier as a way to make your Muta Vaults more easily able to cast Night Vale Spectre, yes. make your Night Vale Spectres better otherwise. Yep. But there's one other aspect of it that I find really interesting. It shrinks your deck so that there's just more of the stuff that you've got. Right. Just as kind of a cantrip effect that has, uh, has some relevant ability. As he mentioned already, casting Night Vale Spectre off Mutavolt and being able to cast the card stolen with Night Vale Spectre. So, anyway, we're underway, and Caleb Durward is going to get things going with us, or going for us with a turn one Thoughtseize off a of Swamp. And we've got Desecration Demon, Swamp, Whip of Erebos, Devour Flesh. Um, what, what Thoughtseize, I see is as well. There's a card in between, in between the Thoughtseize thought and, and the, the Devour Flesh. It's, it's too little of it is revealed for me to see. Yeah. Could it be Erebos? I, I can't it, quite I think. That's a Muta Vault. It's a Muta Vault, you're right. That's a Muta Vault. And so Swamp, Muta Vault, Swamp, besides that. The cards I like here are Thought Seize and Whip to get rid of. And he goes with the Whip. Yes. Very good choice. Whip, uh, extremely dangerous card in, in a lot of matchups. It's very, very good. Uh, giving your creatures lifelink and then being able to resurrect guys that have already been dealt with through means such as Thought Seize or just removal. So... BBD is going to Thoughtseize, so now we'll get a look at Caleb's hand. We've got Heroes Downfall, Mutavault, Desecration Demon, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, and a Swamp. So uh, That's a pretty good hand as well. Yeah, both players with a lot of gas. Uh, the Heroes Downfall is a card that could kill an early Spectre, which is actually a huge part of this matchup. That's the card I would probably take, but there's reasons to take the Desecration Demon, which can close out the game very quickly as well. Now, he does have a uh, Devour Flesh in hand. Right. Yep, BBD having an answer to the uh, to the demon makes it maybe more appealing to take Caleb's answer to whatever Brian, uh, Brian's demon, in fact, because Brian actually does have a Desecration Demon in hand, if I'm correct. Goodbye, so hero. Hero's downfall is the choice. Caleb now on turn two draws, uh, I think it was a second Muta Vault. So he's going to play Muta Vault number one. Yep. Pass back. You are correct. There's another Muta Vault in his hand. Brian now going to play Temple of Deceit. That's a Take new card. Take a look at the top of his library, the scry ability. Very, very relevant. Even in a mono black deck, just being able to, uh, to get that ability, he decides he wants to keep it on top, and he passes back. Caleb now going to play Prophetic Prism, which was the top deck for the turn. Draws a card and mm. plays a Swamp. Another and a Thought Seize. Seize. That's a nice one. What's left now? Devour Flesh, Muta Vault, and Desecration Demon, as well as a pair of swamps. So Goodbye goes Devour Flesh. So it seems like Caleb is on the uh, plan of landing that Desecration Demon next turn and leaving BBD with no answers to it. I oh think he just threw a Hero's he Demise. He did. <laughs> hero's Downfall. Downfall. Hero's yes. Downfall. Uh, hero's Downfall at the top for BBD, and he passes back. Caleb now. Oh, look at that. An underworld connection. Yeah. So he has a he has a choice to make here. He can play the demon or he can play the connections. He's going to go with the connections, it looks like, on a swamp and pass back BBD now. Knowing that Desecration Demon is there, expecting it on turn four, has uh, three fallow mana there. That he there is use. the demon. That leaves a Swamp in hand as his only known card. Caleb draws a card and then gets to untap and draw a card. Yeah, Underworld Connection is going to do some work here for Caleb. See a Nykthos joining the party. One, two, three, four mana. A Desecration Demon. So it's a demon on demon. We know that uh, BBD has an answer in the form of Hero's Downfall. In fact, he's got two Hero's Downfall in hand, which is lining up perfectly with the fact that Caleb has a second demon. In for eight. Ouch. And Caleb's like, I'll take another one. I'll draw another card. Caleb in a dangerous situation here at six life. Now remember, Grey Merchant could just finish him off even if he kills that demon in play. Another Muta Vault. Another... He's he, got his own Grey Merchant. He does have Grey Merchant, so he's not quite at six if he decides he wants to uh, cast it, but it's not not a ton, you know, he's not 
He's just kind of padding his life total if he goes with Grey Merchant here. He's going to go with his second Desecration Demon. Doomblade in hand. Wow. Yeah, he's that's in real danger right now. Yeah, BBD has the hero's downfall for that demon. So Caleb could activate Mutavolt and sacrifice it to uh, fog the demon for a turn. BBD here going to go ahead and use that hero's downfall. Boom. Deal with Caleb's desecration demon. Now, looks like uh, he's going to go ahead and activate his own Mutavolt. And... Yeah, there you go. Caleb's going to activate and sacrifice his Mutavolt to tap down the demon for a turn and take two from BBD's Mutavolt. Down Caleb, to four. Yeah, down to four and down to three. Oof. Underworld Connections. Kind of doing some work for both players, although I'm sure BBD, if he had the option, would say I'd rather him not have drawn four cards off of Underworld Connections. And we see Doomblade, Grey Merchant. Grey Merchant's going to gain Caleb four life. So it's going to put him at Xaxes for the demon, but uh, he does he does still have a Mutavolt over there. He's going to have to uh, tap that swamp in order to activate it and sacrifice it, or he could just sacrifice the Grey Merchant. So if Caleb wants more cards, he certainly could have them. And Brian Brondwin puts the ability on the stack. Uh, there's another Mutavolt hanging out. Yeah, that's so there's a Mutavolt hanging out there, so he, Caleb could either sacrifice the the Grey Merchant or he could activate Mutavolt and forego the drawing of the card that he's so attached to. He's going to do that. He's going to go ahead and uh, keep the Grey Merchant around, sacrifice the Mutavolt, tap down the Demon. The Demon is now an 8-8, but it is tapped. And uh, Brian Brondwin, if he were to attack with his Mutavolts, he would lose one for the privilege of paying two damage to Caleb. Yeah. Caleb, though, here, he's losing mana by uh, having these two lands go away. What do we have? Post-combat Grey Merchant for four life. And Caleb back down to three. Yikes, he's in real trouble here. Yeah, that Doomblade, uh, pretty much a dead card unless BBD activates a Mutavolt. We see a Night Veil vale Spectre has been drawn by Caleb. A little late to the party, although it will help keep that uh, demon at bay just for another turn. Four mana gets a Night Veil vale plus. Yeah, he's, he's just I leaving think he it just, there. Yeah. We see the two three flyer. Now Caleb is going to have to lose some creature in one way or another to that demon. Haven't had a look at BBD's hand in a bit. He's got the Desecration Demon with two counters, so it's an 8-8. And he's got a Mutavolt. He's got two Mutavolts, and he's got a Grey Merchant as his attack force. Or his potential Magic attackers. He is at a pretty healthy 18 life. He's going to go ahead and move to combat. Desecration Demon trigger. Caleb has to... Uh, he has to either chump block with that Night Veil Spectre or, or sacrifice it, yeah. something. The chump block would keep it from uh, from growing, so I think that's likely what he does. Yeah. Demon attacks. Spectre gets in the way. So essentially he taps down the demon, losing the Spectre, but not growing the demon. And we see a whip added to Brian Brondwin's side. Caleb goes to two, finds, is that a hero's? I believe it is a hero's, hero's downfall. Hero's downfall. That'll help quite a bit, but that whip is still there. Swamp. Doomblade downfall in hand. Two life. A Mutavolt hiding amongst Caleb's lands. Caleb draws again. Gray Merchant. The Merchant would be for six. Wow, Caleb all the way to one life here off of that Underworld Connections, and he's going to be able to pad that quite a bit with a Grey Merchant. He's trying to decide what he wants to do here. If he casts the Grey Merchant, he'll only have two mana left. 
He could he could activate Nykthos, right? Right? Because well, his even devotion with the right Nykthos, now. the Nykthos makes it three four mana right. for the Nykthos. So then it takes another land, and it'll only have two left. Oh right, I'm sorry. So yeah, he's yeah. gonna have to sit back. I think he's gonna end up. Uh, gosh, the whip here, so good. Yeah, Caleb wishing he had a whip to pad that one life he's at. But and uh, Brian Brondwin says, "Demon, anything, anything." Caleb thinks. BBD appears to have some sort of play. Looks like he's going to go ahead and vaults. activate the Mutabolts. He's going to turn uh, on that Doomblade, Doomblade targets. Yeah. Here come all the monsters. So everybody in, says BBD. Caleb is going to trade Mutavolt for Mutavolt. He's going to let the Grey Merchants bounce off each other. He's going to likely uh, downfall the Demon, which is pretty necessary if he wants to survive the turn, and Doomblade the Mutavolt. So Caleb wow. gets out of that turn. When the dust settles, both players left with uh, a lone Grey Merchant, and I think they're both out of Mutavolt. Yeah, that's the graveyard, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. DVD is out of Mutavolt. Caleb is out of Mutavolt. Both players with just a Grey Merchant. Now Caleb with a Grey Merchant in hand can gain six life. And that's uh, that's six more cards. <laughs> I think the way Caleb sees it. Let's gain six. Back up to seven. Brian Braun to win at 16. Both players have a swamp in their hand. Caleb Durward with two gray merchants in play and uh, Underworld Connections. And Brian Braun to win with one gray merchant in play and a whip of Erebos. Now, we can't forget about that whip and the lifelink. So it's uh, if, if BBD is able to kind of put a few more creatures on the board, that lifelink could put himself out of reach. Brian Braun to win here. The Brian Braun to win here on the left, thinking through the situation. I mean, here he is. He's got a whip in the graveyard, but his creatures, Desecration Demon, is uh, a card that can be removed or can be tapped. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and try to whip it anyway. So uh, he whips the demon into play. And Caleb checks, gets a little bit more information, and then sacrifices his tapped merchant. And that demon, it's currently tapped. The merchant comes in. Caleb Durward blocks with his own merchant. And then the demon is going to be removed from the game, exiled by the whip. Yeah, so essentially that was a long way around to dealing with one of Caleb's gray merchants. And, and gaining some life. Caleb down to six life. Shoots off a duress. What you got in there? Just a swamp. Okay. <laughs> Let's draw a card up to five. Looks and like another Caleb's swamp. Hands just swamps as well, yeah. Now, uh, with only swamps in play, this next desecration demon that he could whip into play, Brian Brondwin could whip into play, will have to eat a gray merchant. Is there one in the yard, or is the yard empty? Uh, yeah, it's that desecration demon is exiled. Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes. That is the exiled one. Caleb Durward draws a card again. Yeah, as I mentioned, he is just using that Underworld Connections to and, and that six life that he gained off of that Grey Merchant to uh, to just draw extra cards. He finds another Mutavolt. Oh, nice wow. play. And what we see there is Brian Brondwin devours flesh for himself, puts his Grey Merchant into the graveyard, and then indicates the whip plus Grey Merchant will be just enough to knock Caleb to exactly zero. That, I love that play. I love that you can do that with the Grey Merchant. Uh, it's, it's one of those cards that you don't really... You know, you see it for face value. Okay, it's going to drain me. But when you've got something like Whip on board, uh, it you puts your opponent in such an awkward spot where you're like, well, I don't want to, I can't kill their Gray Merchant because he'll just whip it back and drain me again. Like the, the interaction between Whip and Gray Merchant is awesome, and having access to cards like De uh, Devour Flesh in Black. Not only is it going to take care of opposing Blood Barons, as we were talking about earlier, but you uh, you can just sacrifice your own guy if your opponent declines to kill it for you. Right. Now, uh, we said earlier that Caleb Durward runs four main deck pack rats, which is a great way to play against the mirror. 
And uh, after sideboard, though, Brian Braun win has a total of four pack rats. He's got two main, two board. Two main, yeah. two board, whereas Caleb has four in the main. So that's one thing that's going to happen. A second Erebos is going to come in for Brian Braun to win. Um, and then Duress, certainly going to come in. Dark Betrayal times one, a card that can be brought in. Devour Flesh, a card that could maybe be brought in. But one of the interesting things is Pything Needle. Pything Needle is a card that you don't name Underworld Connections because Underworld Connections is not the card that's exactly. drawing you cards. Underworld Connections gives the land that it is enchanting the right. power. So you can't preemptively needle. I mean, you can go, say, s you can Pything Needle Swamp, and if they misplay by putting their Underworld Connections on a swamp, then sure, but most likely you're going to hold the needle. If you want to deal with Underworld Connections, you got to wait until s till they put the Underworld Connections on a land so you can name that land. Now, I would say I would probably run... Um, if I chose to bring in the Pything Needle, at most one. And the way that you end up using this, since both players are basically playing largely the same cards, mm -hmm. this is if you choose to bring it in at all, which there's plenty of arguments not to, since it can turn off your own cards. The, the way you would play it is to wait to get the Underworld Connections and then enchant a different land if you're able, that kind of thing. Or if they happen to get ahead, let's say that they lay a Pack Rat, and you look at your hand and you're like, wow, I don't have an answer. At the very least, you can just drop the Pything Needle right away before the Pack Rat takes over. Yeah, exactly. And uh, pretty much the only only answer to a Pything Needle is discard uh, in these decks. Uh, I'm, I'm looking through to make sure that that's correct. But I, I mean, if you don't get the needle when it's in their hand, once it's on the table, you're not dealing with yeah. it. Yeah. One, of the, one of the weaknesses it. of the mono black deck is its difficulty in dealing with a non-creature permanent. So you mentioned uh, the one of Dark Betrayal yes. that, uh, that BBD has. Caleb has three of them. So Dark Betrayal, one of the, the cycle of self, well, you know, the, the, the colors fighting themselves. We've got Gainsay countering a blue spell and Glare of Heresy removing are exiling a white permanent. And uh, Dark Betrayal, one mana black instant that destroy target black creature. I'm really pleased that they actually made the Gainsay card into a cycle of cards. Yeah, because Gainsay think that's is a awesome. right? Yeah, Gainsay, a card that was printed quite a while ago. And uh, I know that on our Twitter feed, that's at uh, SCG Live and hashtag SCG Envy, where you can join us in our conversation, that somebody a while back had suggested that you know, we, we shouldn't be pointing people towards old versions of the cards because uh, they seem to be implying that those old versions weren't legal. That's not actually true. If a card has been reprinted, you can use the old card. You don't have to use the new card. Absolutely. So if you're just joining us, I'm Joey Pasco in the booth here with Adrian Sullivan coming to you guys live from Indianapolis where the StarCityGames.com Open Series featuring the Invitational is underway, and we are in the final round of day one, round eight of 16. Uh, we're going to wrap up standard for you right here during this round live. And then tomorrow morning we'll be back with four rounds of Legacy, four more rounds of standard, all culminating in a top eight featuring Legacy as the chosen format on Sunday. So we've got magic for you guys all weekend long. Don't forget the Open Series is also happening this weekend. You can come and play Standard in the Open Series tomorrow. You can come play Legacy on Sunday. And we've got a number of other side events, including the Ascension Immortal Tournament oh, coming man. up on Sunday. I've been playing Ascension all day between rounds, actually, on my iPad. So we see a swamp here from Caleb Durward, swamp from Brian Brondwin. Neither player getting any of their one-drop removal, I'm sorry, discard spells. No one-drop discard from either player on turn two turn three will we see a night veil specter will we see a pack rat there's a pack rat and a pass no third land for caleb durward devour flesh perhaps and ultimate price there we DVD. go that works as well he wants to hold those devour flesh so he can target himself and get his gray merchant <laughs> <laughs> in the graveyard beautiful vault well, from bbd passes the uh, devour can also kill a night veil specter certainly second can. pack rat and BBD says, all right. Let's all eat right. that one. Let's eat, eat that one. Eat your rat, yeah. I Omnil. think it's making making Caleb eat it because he's the one that gains the life, right? I, ag I agree. Yeah. I like it. I like the flavor. And in for two, <laughs> a free two damage from the Muta Vault. Now, I know that some players really don't like the uh, Desecration Demon after sideboard. I'm curious to see what people say uh, they want to do here. So this is really scary. Caleb down a game versus BBD and down two lands. Finally finds his... his uh, his third land drop, but remember, Caleb is on the play here, and he's, so he's two lands behind. 
five mana. Gray Merchant, take two. And Brian Brondwin will gain that life. Now, will there be a response? Yes, there is. In ultimate response, price. ultimate price. So the devotion is zero when the Gray Merchant's ability resolves. So no life change. Caleb passes the turn. Three mana to five mana. All right, BBD now plays his sixth land, and he's got Erebos. Oh, this is a devastating play in this matchup. Erebos doesn't even have to get to the, um, to the let's call it, a live stage. Yeah. It doesn't even have to get to the fifth devotion in order for it to be devastating. That drawing a card, as well as stopping your opponent's Grey Merchants from getting the gain life ability, and the whips from getting the gain life ability, huge. Absolutely. So you can see... BBD already using that draw card ability at the end of Caleb's turn and then uh, using it here at the beginning of his own. Still four mana to play with. He's going to draw another card. And, and there he finds a, his seventh land drop. Passes back here. Caleb, Caleb oh, oh, he's in trouble. Find, yeah, cannot find... A, uh, a third swamp to play any of the Night Vale Spectres. Yeah. I believe he's got two in hand. Now, a lot of people have said that uh, they don't like the Muta Vaults or that kind of card in here because of Night Vale Spectre. I know that in my own testing, 21 black sources was all it took to be able to make, I shouldn't say black sources, colored sources are all it takes to get the color, color, color as a thing that you can consistently uh, count on. And Caleb is running two prophetic prisms to help out. 20 swamps, two prophetic, prophetic prisms. He's sure, certainly wishing for a prophetic prism right now, or yeah. a swamp. Sometimes it just happens. It's a variance. That's how it, how it works. So uh, BBD is going to cast Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Caleb is going to respond with Hero's Demise, as we saw him do earlier. So there's no life gain. But well, there's still one life gain. Oh, sure. There's sure. the Erebos itself sitting in play, but almost no life gain. Right. Uh, oh, so. Underworld Connections finally drawn. And a thought thought sees, sees is Caleb's. What play. do you got over there? Pack Rat. Ouch. Uh, I see Pack Rat, Devour Flesh, Heroes Downfall. Is that tribute to hunger? Is that. It can't I'm be sorry, tribute. No, it can't be. It looks like it. <laughs> oh, it's Dark, uh, betrayal. Dark Betrayal. Wow. You know how much that card looks like tribute to hunger? I'm like, that's not legal. <laughs> yeah, Dark Betrayal. Uh, the one of that BBD has in his board is in his hand. So. All sorts of removal and two swamps from BBD. After the pack rat is taken with the Thoughtseize, Caleb going to write down BBD's hand. So it's looking really rough for Caleb here. He is standing at the moment at 6-0-1 oh, on the day, so still in great shape uh, <laughs> record-wise. Caleb gets in a, a free two damage, knocks Brian Brondwin down to 11. Now Brian can't be too greedy with that arrow bow, so he could, he could potentially die. I don't know. He saw Caleb go to one earlier. <laughs> so <laughs> he's like, oh, you want to be greedy? I'll be greedy. So I'm going to nine here. Draws another card. Well, nine isn't scary. Nine but once is you get Once you get scary. down to like four, you start getting into scary lands. Another land from Brian Braun's win. Is that a pack rat? Uh, he oh, did. He found off another the top, pack rat. And that is probably going to be, uh, I think, the lights out for Caleb unless he gets some incredible pulls. He has two gray merchants. Oh, that is not incredible. Spectre. That is a non-land. He has a dark betrayal in hand. He's going to go ahead and cast it. Uh, BBD is going to make a rat. Loses a swamp to make the rat. A second copy of dark betrayal will deal with the second rat. There we go. That was pretty good. Yeah, so he's able to actually keep the pack rats from multiplying. And uh, BBD is going to... Spend the end of Caleb's turn, drawing another card off of Erebos. BBD down to seven now. Okay. Caleb with a lone Muta Vault untapped and another Devour Flesh off That's the top for a BBD. A ton of removal and uh, not... I didn't think I see any creatures there. Five life, looking for a creature. Thought sees. Yeah, that's a scary <laughs> one to cast here. Oh, boy. And now Brian Brogdon yeah. is thinking. <laughs> one of the things he does have is he does have a two life cushion with his own Muta Vault. So he can, if he needs to, sacrifice his own Muta Vaults to a Devour Flesh right. to gain life. He goes, let's go a little bit further down, down to three. What do we got here? Very scary. I think he's another, another Pack, pack rat, rat. So, And Pack Rat is the play. Now, that's a low life total. It certainly is. 
Very scary place to be. Three life. Oh, no, uh, no help for Caleb Durward here. Well, this is just rough for Caleb. Cannot find a third swamp. How many turns in are we? 10, 11 turns? Goodbye, Thoughtseize. A pack rat joins in. Caleb might activate something here. Nope. Now, one of the things about these pack rats, these are copies of the pack rat. Right. So they do count for devotion. Right now, there's three devotion in play for Brian Braun to win. But if he made two more rats, that would give him five devotion, and Erebos would be uh, made flesh. Yes. Flesh that can be devoured if necessary. And also worth noting, Mutavault is a rat amongst its many types, yes, which will help out the uh, various pack rats. Another rat. So... Rat number one for the turn. Another rat. rat That's a lot of rats. Two. And, and yeah. uh, in for 16 currently in rats. And the Erebos himself for a lethal strike here. Oh, one of those guys obviously sick, so never mind on that. Two of them, two of them two are of them sick, yeah. yeah. Hero's downfall on one of the rats, says Caleb. It's going to uh, shrink the devotion. And... Uh, Brian Braun to win, trying to decide, I think, if he wants to make another rat. Right, he could make a rat here to keep the devotion up before, before the rat dies. Yeah. Right, because if, okay, if the rat dies and then Brian were to make a rat, uh, the Erebos would be out removed of combat. From combat. Yeah. Exactly, he may be a creature again, but he's out of combat. And he only takes three, Caleb down to 13. And Caleb, with only three uh, mana here, is in no danger of... Uh, threatening Brian Braun to win to die in some way or that there's a Nykthos well late and that yeah. should do it for us uh, Erebos of his own no life gain for Brian Braun to win that's actually very interesting uh, but except for the fact that Caleb is dead on the table <laughs> yeah he responds by making a rat that Erebos is not live cannot block Caleb can't cast a spell from his hand can't activate a mutavault so it looks to me like 16 damage. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is that? 25 damage worth. There of we go. Rats and an Erebos. So about 30, I think, BBD just attacked for. That's him. true. Now, uh, I think that that might be the first time a player seated on the left has won. Today. Wow. Oh, that's right. Okay, what is. Oh, this is one you just wrote down. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's right. We've been writing down, <laughs> keeping track of all the matches Adrian has. He, uh, he always does. <laughs> 